studying the Rashi, Arshas Noach, after the destruction of the world, chapter 8, verse 16. I don't know what page it is, if anybody knows the page. It's um, chapter 8 of Genesis, verse 16. God said to Noah, you have it, Shoshana? Dan, what page is that? Uh, 51. So, 51. 51. So God says to Noah, say Menateva, go out of the ark. You and your wife and your children and the wives of your children with you. I should say, before going to explaining this verse, God has to tell Noah to leave the ark. Why? Because, because they didn't want to leave the ark. It's going to be very, very hard to move on. <laughs> from your from your secure place after your after you witness a terrible loss, terrible destruction. They didn't want to leave. They didn't want to go on. Also, I want to say that when I was in uh, so Manhattan on Shabbos morning, I dove into Rabbi Adam Mintz's congregation. And Rabbi Adam Mintz gave a beautiful parasha class before the, the, the study. And when he gave the parasha class, they talked about the sin, Cain and <clears throat> Cain and Abel. And, and, and they, they discussed that it wasn't just <clears throat> the first murder. It was the first time that anybody had killed an animal. So maybe Cain was upset at Abel for killing the animal. <laughs> that was the, anyway, I always hear new explanations. Okay, so God says to Noah, go out from the ark, you and your wife. So Rashi says, Ish ishto, man with his wife. Kani tashmi shamita. That while they were in the ark, they were prohibited to live together as man and wife. They were prohibited to be intimate with each other. But now God permitted them to have relations. He permitted them to have relations. And that's not just the technical permission to have relations. He's saying you have to live. You have to go out into the world. You have to reproduce. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. You have to go out and reproduce. The verse says, verse 17, every living being that is with you, from every flesh, and from every creepy crawly creature on the land, they shall go out with you, and they shall crawl on the earth, they shall be fruitful on... Oh, hold on, Jerry Shekin is trying to come on. Hold on. Hold on, Jerry is asking me to email him the link. So hold on one second. Okay, so the the text says the text says Hotse Itach. So Rashi tells us it's written Hotse, but it is read Haitse. It's written with a vav, but it's read with a yud. Why? Haitse and Morlam Shayetu. The word Haitse is implying that they should go out. Hotse implies it may not know similar state hotsi emata. If they don't want to go out, you have to take them out. It means to say you have to force the animals to leave the ark. You can't leave them in there. You can't allow them to stay in. 
This to me reminds me of when a person is Rahman Watson sitting Shiva. We don't let them sit the full seven days. We make them go out early. We force them to leave their house. They can't sit for eight days. They're not allowed to. They're not allowed to. Vishar Tsuva Aretz, they have to swarm on the earth, but not in the ark. Rashi tells us that also the animals were prohibited to reproduce while they were in the ark. I don't know how they enforced that, but they enforced it. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, it wouldn't have been nice. Uh, they instinctively, the, just okay. like they don't... Pro yeah, but Yosef, uh, you're trying to say something? I can't hear you. Sorry. Just like they don't procreate on, in, on, in on, zoos. What are you trying to say, Rabbi Yosef? Just like they don't procreate in zoos, they they naturally don't procreate when they feel there's danger or no survival. Oh. For their... Animals don't procreate in zoos? No. It's, it is it is uh, extremely rare when a giraffe or an elephant is born, but almost none of the other animals ever um, have children in the zoos. I never knew that. So never, it's... ever, ever knew that. Thank you for Cause, sharing. Because I don't see the sense in, in having a continuation when they know that their life is technically over, so. That's powerful. Okay. Next verse. Rashi says, Vayetzi Noach and Vanav Yishtoh and Yishtoh and Yishtoh. Noach went out with his Noach went out with his sons and his wife and the wife of his sons with him. Koach Haya all the animals Koach Remes Koach, all the animals, all the creatures, all the birds, all the creepy crawly creatures, Mishpachotayim, for their families, Yatsumina Teva. Well, she says, Kibuah Ayam, Almanas, the Davek Buminan. And we didn't go up to it. Koach, all the animals, Koach, Rams, Koach, Koach, Mesa Arts. So all the animals, all the creepy crawly creatures, all the birds. For their families left the ark. What does it mean for their families? They took upon themselves that they were only going to reproduce with their own species. One of the uh, theories about what their sin was, was that they didn't, that the animals were mixing up the species. That's one of the theories. It sounds, all it sounds ridiculous because an, an animal like uh, a horse won't meet with a frog. Sounds ridiculous, but everything that sounded ridiculous, now we're seeing it come to fruition with science. That yeah, science can try to do all these crazy things, like made a horse with a frog or something like take the DNA and mix it together. It's just for experiment so purposes, see what you get. So now Noah comes out of the ark. Vayiveh Noach, and Noach builds a Mizbeach Hashem. Noach builds an altar to God. Vayikach mikoa beima Torah, mikoa ofa tahar, tahor, vayalo rot ba Mizbeach. So Noach builds an altar to God, and he takes from all the animals that are tahorah, from pure animals, from all the birds that are pure, vayalo rot ba Mizbeach, and he makes sacrifices on the altar. Now he's still only got one of each. Now one female of each. If he sacrifices them, where do we go? From, well, from the kosher birds. Well, from the kosher birds, he brought seven of each. Remember, from the kosher animals, he brought seven of each. So seven male, seven female. So therefore, Rashi right, yeah. says. And and Rashi addresses your question, Shoshana. Rashi says that Noah said to himself, He said, well, that's the reason why God told me to bring seven uh, male, seven and female, so that I can bring sacrifices. It's kind of freaky. 
that is maybe no what would it possess Noah to think that he's supposed to kill an animal as way of serving God? Why would he think that? So Rashi says he thought that because God sent him on there with seven males and seven females of the kosher ones. But if I wasn't afraid of saying something that was less traditional, which I am deeply afraid of, but I'm just saying like in my mind, I'm thinking that maybe he saw God take the sacrifices of the humans. And so now he says, well, if God could kill, I could kill as a way of serving God, which is a very creepy uh, answer and creepy response. So, or, yes. He said, God killed the humans, but he says, but I'm going to kill animals instead. That's what he's saying, that we're better to kill animals than humans. But God never told him to kill the humans. That means to kill the animals. So why would he think that? So that's why Rashi's answer is coming in, but it's it seems insufficient to me. So the Gemara yeah. says in three places that Adam already sacrificed. Right. It says that in the Talmud, but but the the Torah text doesn't say it. Right, but I'm saying, but even if like what I wrote in my email last week was basically even if if we don't have to take it literally, the idea that that um before Mount Sinai, um, people knew that they're allowed to bring a, a ola, a burnt offering, but not anything else. And what changed for the people of Israel was that they're allowed to bring also shlamim and a sin offering. Because uh, what... Uh, specifically here, it says about Noach that it was an ola, right? So, uh, And also... Um, when when the sailors um, that threw Jonah into the water, they also brought an Ola. So a non-Jew is allowed to bring an Ola, and a Jew is allowed to bring all the others. Yeah. All right, well, we need to do, as they say, Tzaruch Iyun. We need to study it, Rabbi Yosef. We need to study it. Yes, Shekoa. Thank you. So then it says, Hashem et and So God smelled the sweet smell, but it's also the word Mikhoach sounds like Noah. Hashem God said to himself, Well, we see if we call Od as Hadama before Adam. I'm not going to continue to curse the people on account of man. Because the heart of man is bad from his youth. I will not strike down any living person just like I did. This is a little bit of a depressing verse. God says that man is created fundamentally bad. That's why God says I'm not going to curse them anymore. Rashi says what this means is Rashi says what this means is Minu Rav Kisiv Mina Rav Mishen Nin Ar at Saint May Mel May May Imo Nitan Bo Yetzer Hara. It's even worse. From the moment that he stirs to leave the womb of the mother. The evil inclination is stirring inside of him. According to this, Rashi is saying you have the evil inclination while we're still in the womb. This is disturbing. <laughs> that was last weekend. We, Cain was never told not to murder. I don't even know it was wrong. But okay, that's a separate discussion. But the low Osif Ode, uh, she says, 
I will not continue, God says, He repeats it twice to give us an oath. That I swore that I swore not to make the waters of Noah pass. We only find this oath. So when they when they double the language, it means it's an it means it's an oath. The um, we see from here also that the the flood, there's a whole discussion, there's a lot of debate. Is Noah good or bad? And the real one of the main arguments to say that Noah was not so great was the fact that the the prophet. Isaiah in the Torah for Parshas Noah calls him the May Noah, the, the difficult, the, the bitter waters of Noah. So this kind of indicates that that Noah was 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 at fault a little bit. By the way, I want to say that was if you haven't been to the chapel at Mount Sinai Hospital, you should go. Is very special, and they read the Torah. The person who read the after they have a lot of different customs because nobody has. They say it's called the Mashiach minion. Why is it the Messiah minion? Because every type of Jew comes, and they have no choice. They have to pray, and they all pray together. So the read, guy read the Torah. His custom was to chant it, but the Hasidim who were there, their custom is to all read it silently. So everybody was doing a different custom. And it was very powerful and beautiful to see. And those who are just coming in now, I shared the story that, and Shia was there, he could tell you the story, that after we uh, got, we were all in the hospital on Shabbos, Rowie was the only one who was there for a good reason. He had his wife had a baby. Everybody else was there in, in prayer for Rufua Shalema. So, so after we prayed a mincha, after we done Mincha, the, they started saying to him, and then everybody put their arms around each other. Hasidim with the reform, the people who you might think were anti-Israel were davening for Israel like crazy. Everybody was davening together because Kali Israel knows, you know, you take away the politics, the Jew to Jew, there's no politics. Jew to Jew, we are davening from the bottom of our hearts for Amcha, for Am Yisrael, for the Jewish people. And that's what we felt. Yes, we're a bill. Yes, that's true, but Bill has a good point. But we could say, but why is it called the waters of Noah? That's indicating that the that the flood, or it was his fault. It's his flood, Noah's flood so to speak, Noah's foot, so to speak, which is problematic, obviously. Problematic, obviously. Um, okay, so then... He didn't try to save the world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, by the way, there is no indication of that in the text. The only thing the text says, God told him when he was 500 to build an ark. And at 600, the flood started. So for 100 years, he was completely unsuccessful at even convincing one person. Like there wasn't even one person. He was the least successful prophet in history. Not even one person agreed with him. What? No, so it didn't never says he tried, but the point is Yeah. I mean that's why the whole debate was about Noah. Was he good or or was he 
but because he's called righteous, he's called righteous, he's called a tzaddik, but then it's called the main Noah. It's called tzaddik, righteous for his time. In the first round, she talks about if he's good or not. I just want to say before we stop, I want to just tell everybody the schedule before we stop for Mincha, the very powerful schedule. Tonight is Rosh Chodesh. We have